Hogwarts Legacy is a massive game, and if you're jumping into it now that it's finally releasing, uh, there's a lot of stuff you can miss out on or mistakes you can make. We got 10 things to talk about, so let's get started off with number 10. Let's start with something that's basic, but pretty essential. Hogwarts Legacy is a game where you're mostly getting random gear from chests all the time. If that gear makes your numbers go up, you're gonna want to equip it, obviously. But like a lot of games with random loot, if all you ever do is put on whatever is best, you're probably gonna end up looking like a weird fashion disaster. I mean, seriously, Hogwarts Legacy has some really dumb looking pieces of equipment. Uh, you, you, have you seen the dragon glasses? <laughs> Scrope tried to warn her. I'm sorry to hear that. How do you benefit if I find the pages? Now, you don't want to look like a clown, so open up the gear tab and change your appearance. Just press square or X when you've got the cursor over a gear slot and you can freely change its appearance to any other piece of gear you've picked up so far. It's great. This feature is usually typically called transmog and uh, it really should be the model for other games that drop random loot on you. I, I, we're going to be totally honest, even though there's a little on-screen prompt, it took us way too long, a couple of hours into the game to even realize this is an option, so don't make the same mistake we did. Change your appearance so you actually have gear that looks at least a little bit less embarrassing and more of exactly what you want. Next over at number 9, here's something that also took us a little bit too long to notice. In most open world games, when you complete a challenge that upgrades your character, you get that upgrade instantly. But that's not exactly what happens in Hogwarts Legacy. So for specific stuff like the Merlin Trials and Ancient Magic spots that can net you some permanent upgrades, like more meter for the Ancient Magic or the ever important gear slots, you can actually spend a good portion of the game running around knowing you have these improvements waiting for you unlocked in a menu. which is pretty embarrassing if you go into that menu and see all the stuff you didn't cash in. So don't be like us, go into the challenges tab and then find the ones for Merlin Trials and Ancient Magic and actually activate these upgrades manually. We spent a lot of time running around doing Merlin Trials to upgrade our gear capacity, only to wonder why the capacity wasn't increasing and it was because we had to go into this menu and essentially just click on it to activate it. Again, sounds silly, but the game throws so many other elements at you, you might lose little things here and there and that's one of them, so pay attention. Next over at number eight, like I had said, when you first start out in Hogwarts, it's almost overwhelming how much stuff there is to find. Certain things like uh, locked doors take a while before you're able to actually crack them. But there are other things that you can open that are available almost immediately. The problem is you just might not realize it. Like these weird looking mirrors or these big cabinets you find all over the place can't be opened unless you've done the quest that explains how they work. So don't run around trying to figure these things out because you won't get anywhere doing that. Instead, just find the side quests they're connected to. For the moth mirrors, you'll want to find the quest like a moth to a frame. It's given by a girl in the main room of the library annex. If I know Hogwarts, and I do, an empty frame doesn't appear for no reason. There's something more to this. That one's at least kind of obvious, but the quest related to the cabinets is a lot easier to miss. The, that one's called the Dandelion Keys and is found in the Transfiguration Courtyard. Now unlock these house cabinets because it's worth the trouble. Uh, you find all 16 and you get a unique house coat depending on the house you choose at the start of the game. Now there are a few more quests like this, so if you see something and you don't know how it works in Hogwarts, there's probably a side quest explaining it. And they're spread out over a pretty significant chunk of the game. You don't get everything right at the start. Next over at number seven, Hogwarts isn't just a school of magic, it also teaches you an economics lesson because uh, all the teachers want you to buy stuff for their assignments, but you don't have any money. At the start of the game, there's really only two ways to make money. Uh, get some measly amount of gold from chests or sell all the gear you pick up. So don't make the same mistake we did and let your gear inventory fill up without selling stuff because pretty quickly, you'll start having money problems. Just get used to unloading stuff. The biggest problem for new players is that your gear inventory is really small, like we said. It feels up at just 20 pieces. And while it's really tempting to just destroy something you have to pick something else up when you're full up, it's better to just run quickly or fast travel to Hogsmeade or the other surrounding hamlets because each one of them have at least some sort of shop where you can sell your stuff. And when you are getting full on gear, just make sure to have at least one slot open before trying to open any of those big chests. Uh, they always have a piece of legendary gear item. And if your inventory is full, you really don't want to miss out on that piece of gear from that chest. 
Next over at number six, here's another one that we're not too proud to admit. It took us way too long to notice. Uh, in this game, there's a day-night cycle, but a lot of characters will only talk to you at certain times of day. Thankfully, if a quest giver isn't around, uh, you can get the option to wait for them in this little glowing circle. Anyone who's playing is probably gonna notice that. I mean, eventually you're going to run into one or two of these things, but because the game never forces you to change the time of day at the start, you may not realize that you can do it whenever you want. So don't do what we did and spend like 10 hours of the game running around the open world at night where you can barely see anything. Just open up the map and press R3 on a PlayStation controller or click the right stick on an Xbox controller and you'll be able to speed up time so it's either morning or night. Hogwarts Legacy has a pretty beautiful open world, so don't miss out on it by spending half the game running around in the dark. You'll also just miss out on important stuff and loot. Next over at number five, uh, one of the less exciting but still important parts of the games are the assignments. They're usually pretty basic, but you have to do them to unlock certain very necessary spells, and a lot of those spells are pretty good, so you'll want to get them as soon as these assignments pop up. The problems begin when you start getting assignments where they want you to do things like use potions and plants in battle. These things are ridiculously overpriced in stores. I mean, the Thunder Brew potion costs that much, a Mandrake is what? So unless you're rolling in dough, don't buy this stuff. Instead, just save your money for seeds, potion recipes, and blueprints for the Room of Requirement. The game pretty clearly incentivizes you to craft over buying them, because all that stuff is so much cheaper than directly purchasing potions and plants from vendors. So even though it adds a little bit of extra work and tedium, and you probably want those spells right now, in the long run, it'll make your life in Hogwarts Legacy a lot easier if you just try to craft this stuff instead of buying it early on. You're gonna want that money for cooler stuff anyway. Next over at number four, uh, let's talk stealth. There are a few forced stealth sections in Hogwarts Legacy and they're not great. Uh, the second one in particular can be pretty miserable if you don't have the necessary upgrades, so don't make things harder on yourself than they need to be. In the Talents tab, select the Stealth Tree and unlock Sense of Secrecy 1 and then Sense of Secrecy 2. Uh, both of these reduce enemies' abilities to detect you, which makes these forced sneaking segments way more tolerable. If you don't want to waste points on stealth, then at least keep a talent available for when you start the quest, The Caretaker's Lunar Lament. That's the second stealth mission, and one of the more annoying ones in the game. If you find yourself getting caught, then just spend that extra point on stealth. If you don't have a problem, then don't bother, but there's a lot of stealth missions in the game and a lot of opportunities for stealth, so overall, we think getting these talents can help a lot. You're usually not forced to sneak, so it's really up to you. Spend it how you want, but when you spend those two points on stealth, it makes stealth almost like easy mode for a little while. Next over at number three, there are so many little secret doors and passages throughout Hogwarts, usually containing some kind of loot. There's the obvious stuff, like anything that's locked or these big puzzle doors where you have to do math and we're bad at math, but uh, there are almost as many less obvious, more subtle secrets hidden around too, like uh, hidden doors in the environment. There's a door built into this tapestry or this other one built into the molding of a hallway. Sometimes secrets are hidden behind interactables, like. Uh, uh, this secret set of stairs in the Tomes and Scrolls store or the kitchen, which uh, you can only really reach by tickling the pear, and I quote, on this painting near the Hufflepuff common room. One of the most interesting things about Hogwarts Legacy is that nearly every door can be opened, even to places that seemingly serve no purpose. You can't buy anything at Zonko's, but you can go inside and look around. Uh, some of the most interesting rooms in Hogwarts can be found behind random doors that you just never even have to go into. You don't always get something for this extra exploration, but for like the gaming explorer, there's a lot of interesting stuff to just find and see here. Next over at number two, spells aren't just for doing damage and for generating combos, they can be used at specific times in combats to make certain enemies significantly easier. Don't waste your time trying to like plink away at a heavily armored bog frog, instead take them out the smart way by exploiting their specific weakness. Using Leviosa on a frog, just as it's about to use its tongue attack, both interrupts it and then leaves its vulnerable belly exposed, which makes fighting these things so much faster. Or you can do way more damage when you do this. Ambush spiders can be stopped by pulling them out of the ground when they're trying to dig. Uh, the gigantic protectors can be weakened by using the disarming spell on them, and the list goes on. 
pay attention. After encountering an enemy, just be sure to check out the enemies in the collections tab, where uh, the game will tell you what spells are strong against what enemies. Probably our most dreaded enemy is the troll. These guys can take forever to fight if you just try to beat on them, but once I eventually took the time to learn what they're weak against, it made fights against them that much easier and a little faster. Now over at number one, uh, we only encountered this once, but other people might run into this problem too. Uh, late in the game, we hit a spot where like, we just weren't getting any more quests. Usually the game would automatically update the quest list with whatever you're supposed to do next, but this time nothing happened. No messages, no new quests or anything. For a while, we actually thought the game like soft locked on us or something. If you run into a problem like us, then there's actually an easy fix. For some reason, the game didn't automatically open the message you're supposed to get, but you can still find that message in the owl post tab in the menu. If you're like us, then you probably don't check that tab very often, so there are a lot of unopened messages to go through. But all you have to do is open up every message with an exclamation mark beside it to have them count as being read, and eventually you'll find the required message to actually unlock the next quest. I don't know if that's a bug or just something that really is supposed to incentivize you to check your little owl mail, but either way, uh, the game is never supposed to just stop giving you main quests. It's something that doesn't pop up, uh, so check this stuff. We got one extra one for you, a bonus. Don't miss out on the dark arts. Uh, we mentioned this in the 10 things Hogwarts Legacy doesn't tell you video, but it bears repeating that the only really optional spells in this game are the three dark arts. And if you miss them, then they're gone forever. You get these powerful spells from Sebastian Sallow's side quests, which start unlocking in the fall. It takes until right before the end of the game to unlock them all, but if you wanna take a walk on the wild side or just unlock every single spell, then don't miss out on these things and do his side quests whenever they pop up. Then you can murder to your heart's desire. But hey, those are 10 little things, 10 mistakes you can make, uh, just things to learn in Hogwarts Legacy if you're jumping in. So if you enjoyed these tips, definitely let us know in the comments. And if this video did actually help you out, clicking the like button is all you got to do. It very much helps us out. So thank you. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.